Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are you all doing? <clears throat> well, all the purveyors of the date setting for the rapture watching were wrong again. They were looking in between the 11th and the 13th. Here it's the 17th or 18th now. And uh, nothing. In fact, somebody I had saw, I'd seen that were talking about the 17th or nothing, or, or they're still wrong. What's the definition of, uh, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it, there's a, it's kind of, a, it, it was a meme for a while. The definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. And these people are doing that very same thing. It's insanity. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again, year after year, the same dates. Over and over again, year after year, expecting a different result, and it never comes. He said specifically, I'm coming on a day you do not expect. How do we think we can be so arrogant as to figure out what that day is if he told us we wouldn't know it? I think we would be much better suited if we would sit back and start giving thanks for what we do know. And trust him for what we don't. They keep going. And they keep leading people into these horrible, horrible situations, these horrible false understandings and distracting people from worshiping God and instead worshiping the calendar. I think I'm just going to worship God instead and trust him for what I don't know is going to happen and the timing that I don't know. Because then my joy will be even more. Which brings us to this morning's devotion for out of Isaiah 54, 5, Thy Redeemer. Let's go there. Here's the whole verse. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He is called the God of the whole earth. Of course, we just came out of Isaiah. We just did it. Let's see. One, two, three, four. For, that's the beginning here. The eternal covenant of peace, Isaiah 54, 1. Sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not labored with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Why is that? Because in Christ, you will have, if you've never been able to give birth, don't have the ability, there you have more children than you realize. Enlarge the place of your tent, and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords, and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. That's in the future. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth, and will not remember the reproach of your widowhood any more. For your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and your Redeemer is the Holy One of Israel. He has called the God of the whole earth. For the Lord has called you like a woman forsaken, and grieved in spirit, like a youthful wife when you were refused, says your God. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. With a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I will have mercy on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. For this is like the waters of Noah to me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah would no, cover, would no longer cover the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be angry with you nor rebuke you. For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has mercy on you. So God is going to save Israel. He promised he would. I take great comfort in him keeping his promises to Israel. That he is going to save Israel. He's going to redeem Israel. Because if that's the case, that means we have the promises too. How many people are trying to replace Israel with the church? That's impossible. You can't do that. Because if that's the case, then that means there are a bunch of promises in the Bible that will never be fulfilled. And if that's the case, that means they won't be fulfilled for us either. Jesus the Redeemer is altogether ours and ours forever. 
All the offices of Christ are held on our behalf. He is king for us, priest for us, and prophet for us. Whenever we read a new title of the Redeemer, let us appropriate him as ours under that name, as much as under any other. The shepherd's staff, the father's rod, the captain's sword, the priest's mitre, the prince's scepter, the prophet's mantle, all are ours. See, Jesus has more than one name. Jesus hath no dignity, which he will not employ for our exaltation, and no prerogative, which he will not exercise for our defense. His fullness of Godhead is our unfailing, inexhaustible treasure house. His manhood also, which he took up upon him for us, is ours in all his perfection. He's talking about his humanity. To us, our gracious Lord communicates the spotless virtue of a stainless character. To us, he gives the meritorious efficacy of a devoted life. On us, he bestows the reward pronounced by obedient submission and incessant service. He makes the unsullied garment of his life our covering beauty. The glittering virtues of his character are ornaments and jewels, and the superhuman meekness of his death our boast and glory. He bequeaths us his manager, from which to learn how God came down to man, and his cross to teach us how many may go up to God. All his thoughts, emotions, actions, utterances, miracles, and intercessions were for us. He trod the road of sorrow on our behalf, and hath made over to us, as his heavenly legacy, the full results of all the labors of his life. He is now as much ours as heretofore, and he blushes not to acknowledge himself our Lord Jesus Christ, though he is the blessed and only potentate, <clears throat> the King of kings, the Lord of lords, Christ everywhere <clears throat> and every way is our Christ, for ever and ever, most richly to enjoy. O oh, my soul, by the power of the Holy Spirit, call him this morning thy Redeemer. Something we have to remember, is we have to remember, and like Isaiah states, and, and, and it implicates, we have to remember, he went to the house of Israel first, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. They have this same claim as we have. And Jesus is the all in all for everyone who would walk in faith, everyone who would believe, everyone who would look to him. It's incredible. It's amazing. It's astonishing. That we have access to something so amazing. And in the past, nobody realized that this was something that was going to be offered to the future. Now, we've read in the prophets, and we're continuing to read in the prophets, the Gentiles play a huge part in this. And the Lord has constantly mentioned it's going to you, to the Gentiles first, also in addition to you guys, but it's coming to you first, because out of you will come your Redeemer. And when the Redeemer came, they didn't receive their Redeemer, and they denied and shunned the Gentiles. But God said, that's okay, I'm going to change that. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to deal with that. Let me deal with this church first, and then we'll take care of Israel. And so, that's what the last 2,000 years have been, dealing with the church. Very soon, he's going to deal with Israel. And then all of us in faith will stand in his glorious millennial reign. All of us in faith will stand in his presence in heaven. All of us in faith will stand in eternity, in God, in Jesus Christ. And when you really, really just sit and think about that, and think about the severity of that, the, the intensity of that, Think about the implications behind that. I am Christ's, and I will be with him forever and ever in eternal life. Not a life like this, but a life far, far richer and far greater than anything this world can offer. 
This world offers sweat and tears and pain. Hard work and failure. Heaven offers Jesus Christ and everything that he is and everything that the Father is. We have access to that because of him. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, we thank you for this word and for this devotion. We thank you that as Gentiles, and now that we're believers, we're not, because in Christ there is no such thing. We are all did something completely different. But that through Israel came our Redeemer. And it's the same Redeemer that came to Israel. So all of us have the same Redeemer. And in faith, we are all children of Abraham. In faith, we are all one nation. In faith, we all are together and connected by the Holy Spirit. In faith, we also are able to access everything provided through Jesus Christ. In faith, we are all your children, adopted into the Holy Family. In faith, we are all saved. No one salvation different than another. We all fall under one Holy Lord and one Holy God indwelled with a Holy Spirit. Lord, make us to recognize the severity of what's going on here, to recognize the importance and the implications behind the salvation, this wonderful, wonderful gift that we have, that you took to the Jews. For the most part, they denied it. But not all of them. And not forever. You have reserved a remnant like you always do. Just like now in the church, you're, you've preserved a remnant out of the church. It's a, it's a mirror image of what's happening. And that, that remnant of that church is going to become the bride. And the rest of the church will come in, come later. I'm using air quotes for church here. Same with Israel. You have a remnant you're going to save, and then more will come later. You have this perfect plan set up to bring the Savior, the Redeemer, into the world, to show the world this is the answer to everything. And then you've allowed everybody access to come and receive this free gift. And, and many have, but many more don't. And from what you've shown me, it looks like it's a lack of understanding that causes this. A lack of realization of the reality of things. And deception, a lot of deception. Satan has gone out of his way to, to blind people to the truth. Doing everything he can to keep us distracted and, and not looking to you. Many watching for a day on a calendar that will never come. Instead of watching for the Lord... Who is that day? This time frame is, is everything, every bit of it is about distraction. Everything we see on TV, distraction. They, they put a, a court trial between a married couple that means nothing to no one as a distraction. They've got um, skirmishes happening in other countries that have nothing to do with anybody else as a distraction. Um, illnesses and, and, and regulations and this and that, all, all these distractions, these, these normal everyday things that happen, promoting them as something incredible that everybody should pay attention to. And the distraction constantly revolves. It's like the uh, the price is right with the wheel. They, it's always spinning. The wheel never stops. It's just distraction after distraction after distraction. And every time that one dollar comes around, everybody gets super excited. It's going to stop and then it keeps on going. And so nobody's watching, nobody's praying, nobody's looking, nobody's reading the word, nobody's looking to you, nobody's worshiping anymore. And that's its big trick, is to distract everybody, to get people <coughs> to stop reading your word and to stop worshiping you. Father, make it not so. 
make it so painfully obvious that this is the right answer that people can't help but know the truth. And then if they deny it, it's on them. The whole world is distracted. And, and I, I know not what to say. Even when I do say something, it goes in one ear and out the other. It just... It, even when I do talk about it, even with people who in the past have talked to me before about this and were in agreement as to what was going on, are now back questioning again, falling back into it. People in my personal life still can't believe this is it. And it's like, we discovered that, that this was it together. How are you reversing? How are you pulling back? But that's the great distraction that's going on. All these things meant to keep people's eyes off you. Lord, let us never take our eyes off you. I have made a conscious decision not to take my eyes off you, to be watching for you, to salt every conversation I possibly can with these scriptures, to reveal to people that this is it, and to see what they have to say. A lot of times that conversation immediately gets shut down and the subject gets changed to something else because people just don't understand and many seem like they don't want to. But there are some shining lights. Yes, I have been watching. Yes, I have been reading. And what you just said, I was actually in that same book the other day. I, I see exactly what it says. Those shining lights seem to be getting far and few between. Lord, is it really that low of a number? Is it really only about 100 million over 2,000 years that have come full circle? Because your word seems, sure seems to indicate that. And that's so interesting to me. But you do not leave a limited supply of our Redeemer. You leave a full supply for everyone. Access to salvation is for everyone if they would but look, if they would but turn, if they would but choose. And I thank you that you have shown such grace to this world and all the people in it, such mercy to humankind, as to give us such unfettered access to our Lord Jesus Christ. What love that exists in your heart to do that. May we ha love a half as much. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for giving us a Redeemer. When we were, you know, out of the loop so many ages ago, you gave us a Redeemer too. The same Redeemer that is for Israel. So we can all be in the same family. Make us to be according to your will. Make us to walk according to your will. Make us to observe according to your will. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace and your great love. Thank you for your free gift of salvation. Thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, for sending him to die for us and that he died for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying, for rising again, for coming to us and opening our hearts and our eyes. Thank you, Father, so much for this wonderful, wonderful word that we have that reminds us of these things every day. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. What a wonderful gift to have. What a wonderful thing to know. And it's funny because there are times when... I think how silly I must sound to other people. But when I'm in the midst of talking about these things, I feel so confident and so bold about it. And it doesn't sound or feel silly at all. But when I try to step out and look from the outside and look at that, and I can see how silly I must sound to those people. And I don't care. I don't care at all.
my army buddies yesterday. We were playing Minecraft and talking on Discord. And uh, these are these are guys that I'm very close to because we all went through the, some of the same, st most of the same stuff in in the army. And one of them is an atheist, and he was talking about. Uh, what was it he was talking about that was a sin? Oh, bestiality. Name in the Bible where it's at. And he was talking to the other guy. He's One of my other buddies is a Catholic. And he was like, I'm sure it's here. I'm sure it's there. And I'm, I'm immediately like, wrong answer. If you're going to fight that fight, you got to know where this stuff's at. I told him, I piped up and I said, it's in Genesis. It's in Leviticus. It's in Deuteronomy. It's in Exodus. It's in Corinthians, Hebrews, Romans question the question died right there <laughs> because they all know because I've told them I said I have an online ministry I, this is what I do now you know I promote this and I, I go through these things and I study these things as soon as I started saying that question the subject got changed nobody wanted to talk about it no more <laughs> it was kind of funny um, but that's the state of a lot of people today they don't know their redeemer and what they do know about him is what they've heard from others. They don't know about him from this word. This is why we need to be in this word every day and know who our Redeemer is, know what he expects, know what he, his word says. You're not going to be able to memorize all of it. That, that's impossible. I, can't, I can barely memorize any of it. But that's not what he wants us to do. Just know it and be willing because the Holy Spirit will call the word up to remembrance. And I can tell you of countless times where I couldn't recall a verse to save my life. And then when the conversation came up, just like that, verses coming like crazy. That's my Redeemer. That's the effect he's had on me. And he continues to change me. And I look forward to being changed. Because what I was is not the man I want to go back to being. I want to be what my Lord wants me to be. And I need a redeemer for that. And I have one. We all have one. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.